How do you stop an insider threat? Companies are always worried about external threats, you know, the hackers or criminal organizations who want to gain access to your enterprise. But what about the insider threat? This person might not even be a criminal. They just might have a very passionate opinion about a political or a social issue and they use a data breach from your company to advance that cause. Do you think that's unlikely? Let me tell you about a case that happened just two weeks ago. On Thursday, June 23rd, the United States Supreme Court ruled that carrying a handgun was an individual right. Now, whether you agree or disagree with the Supreme Court's position, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the data breach that happened next. So the state of California has some of the toughest regulations in America if you want to carry a concealed handgun. They were directly affected by this decision from the justices. On the day of the ruling, California Attorney General Rob Bonta said in a news conference, that gun violence should not be trumped by a person's right to carry a firearm. Then on Monday, June 27th, just a couple of days after the Supreme Court's ruling, the Department of Justice for the state of California posted a list on its website of every single person in the state of California that had a permit to carry a concealed handgun. This data leak contained every permitting holder's full name, their address, the date the permit was issued, their date of birth, and whether that person was a judge. So you kind of have to question the timing there. Could someone in the Department of Justice of California release that list out of hatred for gun owners? Or could someone in California have released that list because they wanted to show all the Hollywood celebrities and politicians who had concealed carry permits? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who did it or why, but it's your mess to clean up now. So how could you have prevented this in the first place? Now I'm gonna give you 10 tips to help prevent an insider threat, but first just give me 30 seconds to pay the bills here. This video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Right now, if you click the link in the description below, you can get Atlas VPN for only $1.99 a month for three years with a 30 day money back guarantee. When I charge the white pony, I do so in a parking garage that has no cell service but it does have unsecure Wi-Fi. So I personally use Atlas VPN to secure my internet connection from the laptop where I'm typing up all of these awesome scripts for you guys to the public internet. Atlas VPN acts as a tunnel, so your data can't get spied on by hackers or government agents or people who wish to do you harm. Look, in this current political climate, there's a lot of people, both private individuals and even some governments, who want to know what you're looking at online so they can punish you for it. Why make it easy for them? So click the link in the description below and get Atlas VPN for only $1.99 a month for three years with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So there's basically two kinds of threats, the malicious threat and the negligent threat. The malicious threat joins your company with the intention of doing you harm. They want to steal and expose your data. This is the threat that governments are primarily worried about. But just because you're not a government doesn't mean you're immune. You may be a business that does business with a government that this person disagrees with, or you may have labor practices that this person disagrees with, or you might even be one link in a supply chain that gets to the actual target, but you were just easier to infiltrate. The end result is the same. A data breach occurs and you lose your job. Think it can't happen to you? Twitter was recently the subject of a group who tried to get information on Twitter's employees by connecting with them through dating apps. Sure, you can see how even the most loyal employee could divulge company information if they thought it would impress a dating partner. These threats are out there. Now, the negligent threat doesn't know they're a bad actor, but they can still cause some horrible damage. Now, we all know somebody who's a negligent insider threat. They write their passwords down on a post-it note or they email you their password in case there's a problem while they're on vacation. They might even download all their customer data to a USB stick for safekeeping. Now the ignorance of the negligent threat is just as bad as the intentions of the malicious threat, but the strategies I'm about to give you can help mitigate the damage from both. Tip one is to make cybersecurity part of the hiring process. When you're conducting interviews, no matter whether the person's supposed to be technical or non-technical, ask basic cybersecurity questions, such as, should you lock your computer when you get up to go to the bathroom? Or 
how do you store your passwords? This can help identify people who may need extra cybersecurity guidance and training while onboarding. Tip two is insider threat training. We all have to take cybersecurity training every year. Make sure the cybersecurity training that you are giving to your employees has a module for insider threats. It's your employees who are most likely to encounter the insider, so they need to know the signs. Tip three is the principle of least privilege. Never give your employees more information than they need to do their jobs. A receptionist probably doesn't need to know their customer's billing information. A computer programmer probably doesn't need to know your customer's contact information. By restricting the amount of data employees can consume to only what they need to do their job, you're also restricting the kind of information an employee can spill. Tip number four is an application whitelist. You should restrict applications that your employees are allowed to use on their computer to only what they need to do their jobs. Now, I'm a software developer. I know how much it sucks to have to go to cybersecurity every single time. You just want to try out a tool to see if it'll solve your problem, but this will save you heartache later. Other than maybe patching, there is nothing anybody has to do that is so important. They can't wait a couple of days for cybersecurity to check out their program and make sure it's not a virus. Number five is to block personal cloud storage. An employee should never be able to upload a document onto their own personal Carbonite, Google Drive, or Dropbox. You should also consider blocking cloud email like Gmail or Yahoo. If you can't do that because you do allow your employees some occasional personal use of a work computer, at least prevent the uploading of attachments to cloud email. Number six is to get a color laser printer and actually let employees use it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. What, what does this have to do with cybersecurity? Let me tell you. A lot of companies restrict the number and types of employees who can print on the color laser printer because they don't want to waste toner and they don't want to waste paper. A lot of people don't want to be bothered with having to ask cyber or IT for permissions to print on the color printer or send the document to somebody else who has permissions to print on the color printer. So they just go through contortions to take the document home and print it just because they want it to print in color. I guarantee you that a cybersecurity incident is going to cost way more than toner and paper. So buy a color laser printer if you don't have one already. And if you do, allow all of your employees to print from it when they need to. Tip number seven is shredder bins. Place one by the company printer and several sprinkled around the office. A $100 a month shredder service can help prevent a data spill. Tip number eight is to manage up with compliance. Look, if you're like me, you got into computers because you like computers better than people. But your manager probably got where they are today because they're less technical and more political. They might have even forgotten cybersecurity concepts because they're just not hands-on anymore. But the one thing they do understand is that they don't want to lose their job. A lot of senior managers are in their 40s or 50s. If they don't have kids in college, they will soon. And ageism is a thing. The last thing you want to do in your 40s or 50s is be looking for a new job. So they might not understand the technical side of cybersecurity, but they sure as heck understand the compliance side of cybersecurity because that's what's going to cause them to lose their job. Nobody wants to deal with problems that can arise from HIPAA violations or PCI DSS or the new GDPR. So when convincing a manager to implement certain cybersecurity precautions, lead with compliance. Tip number nine is to explain up. Make sure your manager can explain cybersecurity concepts to people who are even less technical than them. So give your boss all the tools they need to pitch cybersecurity concepts to their boss. Finally, use a two-man rule or two-man keychain. You know how America's nuclear weapons can't be fired unless two people turn their keys at the same time? Well, think of that website update as a potential nuclear bomb. Maybe you need a two-man key rule. So here's the basic concept. Person one gets one half of the password. Person two gets the other half of the password. Whenever you need to do a website update, person one types in their half of the password. Person two types in their half of the password. So now two people have to agree that updating the website is a good idea. This would have totally prevented this problem at the California Department of Justice because if it was malicious, it's hard to find two people who share the same political beliefs and are willing to take the fall for updating the website 
And if it was negligence, at least one of those people is going to go, wait a minute, what are you doing? Yes, it'll make it harder to do CI, CD or continuous integration, continuous delivery. But on the other hand, if you're dealing with people's personal information, maybe you need an operational pause before you make any changes. Now, if you take anything away from this, I want you to remember one thing. A negligent insider threat can be just as dangerous as a malicious outsider threat. So it's up to you to use the tools you have available to mitigate the damage an insider threat can cause. Thank you for watching.